Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We're reporting from The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN NFV World Congress 2017 and I'm talking with somebody I've never seen before in my life. <laughs> Martin Taylor, CTO of Metaswitch. Good to see you, Martin. Thanks for talking to us. It's five years since the first um, NFV white paper was released. In, you, in your view, where are we in terms of the viability of the technology itself and the adoption by CSPs? I think we've proved over and over again that technology is viable. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that actually um, some of the smaller telcos have been quietly getting on and deploying virtualized network functions in a very low profile way for two or three years now. Um, so, you know, we obviously the, the, the news tends to focus on the big tier ones um, and uh, the challenges that they have. Um, but the smaller guys, you know, are just, just say, just, just, just quietly getting on with it. Um, I think the technology pieces are actually pretty much there. Um, the, the, the issues remain the cultural and people and skills uh, challenges that, that telcos have in, in adapting to this very new way of working. Ultimately, of course, the transformation journey is all about CSPs being able to deliver a better customer experience. And it's the customers who in the end will be paying for all this after all. So how, does, how are SDN and NFE going to help you gain the best possible insight into the current and future needs of customers? Well, uh, uh, customer experience is certainly part of it, but I, I'm not convinced that that's the main driver. Um, I, I, I mean, w w when we talk to telcos about what, what the business case is, uh, it's always a complicated mix of, uh, you know, it's reduced capex, this is going to be cheaper than buying boxes, reduced opex, uh, it's a very big focus, uh, operations automation, and uh, you know, massively reducing the amount of manpower they need to keep their network uh, up and running and, uh, and healthy. Uh, the customer experience thing mainly comes from the ability, if the, if the network is completely programmable, uh, to enable customers to order services themselves and configure them themselves, a kind of self-service thing. Sort of revolution that we've had in self-service banking on the internet. Um, you know, we, 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 the telco's expecting to bring that to the, their whole basket of services. Um, and a programmable infrastructure, which is what NAV and SDN brings them, uh, you know, is the essential foundation for that. Interestingly, an earlier interview today that I did, I was talking to a, 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 a guy who said, look, I think what you've got to bear in mind isn't mentioned very often. In the end, this is about making money, uh, and it, you can't make a fortune by saving costs. You make a fortune, you, make, you, make, you become rich by making more money. And that's something I think we don't talk about very often in this regard. Do you agree with that analysis? Well, I, the, the challenge always is um, it would be, love, it'd be lovely if we could come up with lots of ideas for new services that would uh, you know, drive additional revenue per user. Yeah. Um, but you know, this is, a, this is an industry that's been in place for a very long time. And uh, you know, new service ideas are, are, are fairly few and far between. Um, we actually have um, some very uh, creative ideas around uh, uh, what we see as an underserved market segment in the, uh, that, that, that mobile operators uh, you know, have, a, have a tremendous potential to address. And that's around the small medium enterprise where uh, you know, the, the, the they would like some kind of a hosted unified communications kind of experience, uh, but delivered on mobile phones rather than to, to, to the desktop. Um, that's definitely an area where our research has shown uh, users are willing to pay for, for a solution and solutions don't exist right now. So that, you know, that, 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 that's a good example. And again, you know, a highly programmable network um, with the flexibility to deploy new kinds of um, voice, in this case, voice and messaging and presence features, uh, rapid prototyping, uh, you know, learning from the experience of the f initial customers, uh, responding to uh, the feedback that you get quickly. Um, that whole kind of DevOps thing where you know, we're constantly improving the software, but that software is constantly being deployed uh, in, into the network. Th 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 I mean, there's a very real prospect of that, of that beginning to happen. And already in some, some of our customers are already starting to do that kind of thing. What we're also what's happening is and as NFE matures and does come into, into common usage, we're starting to hear a lot about AI, about machine learning, and uh, more than anything, really, automation. Again, what do you think these mean in the context of network transformation and how important are they going to be to it and subsequent to that? So if, if your network is capable of delivering uh, lots of interesting information about how it's behaving, then you can capture that information and apply machine learning techniques to uh, detecting anomalies, um, 
and, and deriving insights that you were perhaps not expecting. Uh, I mean, you know, we've, we've seen this in, in all sorts of other walks of life, you know, retail, where people mine, you know, information about people's shopping habits. Um, so we can mine information about behaviors within the network and, uh, and, and derive insights that we can then turn into actions that we, we apply. Um, and people don't, aren't always sure what's actually going to happen when they apply machine learning. Um, I mean, that's, that's one of the interesting, fascinating things about it. We've, we've started applying it to our own service assurance framework, uh, you know, which captures massive amount of information uh, from all of the components that deliver voice services like Volte. Um, and we've thrown machine learning algorithms at it and in, in real world networks and discovered all sorts of interesting things that we didn't know were going on. Um, really? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you haven't been surprised by yes, what? We absolutely have. The, and the, you know, the, the ability of these algorithms to spot, you know, to, to learn from normal behavior and, 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 and then spot uh, patterns of behavior that look like they're out of the ordinary and kind of put two and two together and then and, and highlight these, these things. Really? Yeah. Sinister in the long term? No, not at all. Um, I mean, just hugely beneficial. Um, operating a big network is, 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 is a very complicated thing. There's a lot of stuff happening under the covers, you know, an awful lot's automated. Um, and, you know, human beings can't keep all this in their heads. It's not possible. So the, the idea of having a machine that watches over uh, with the intelligence to, uh, you know, spot deviations from normal behavior is, is hugely powerful. Different sort of question, Martin. Um, what has surprised you the most on the five-year journey to NFE so far? To me, I think the most surprising thing has been um, this open source movement that's been created around orchestration. Um, we always believed that uh, telcos would view orchestration as part of their strategic differentiation and, and wouldn't want to be all sharing some common uh, capability to do this. So that, that it, it surprised me when open source started to kind of dominate people's uh, discussions in the area of, uh, of, of Mano. If you could borrow the telecom TV time machine, which we haven't told many people about yet, um, and you could change one thing over the pa past five years, what would it be in terms of NFV? Well, I, I, it's somewhat on the same theme. I, I, I'm, uh, open source is, is a wonderful thing, but in some ways it's actually held back the progress of NFV um, mm. because uh, it's, it's massively complicated to, wo to, to, to work with compared with uh, you know, equivalent commercial software. Indeed. Uh, yeah. and, and, and telcos are tempted to tinker with it. Um, and, <laughs> and that tends to slow things down a lot. Yeah. Predictions are notorious, aren't they? And, and I, honestly, I do believe that in this, in this game, you can't predict more than 12 months ahead, no matter what. So I'm not going to ask you to predict, but I'm going to ask you to sort of speculate where NFE, the automated network, SDN, AI, all the rest of it will be in about five years' time. How do you see the network evolving given where we're going now? I think that within the next five years, at least some telcos will realize that actually their core competence is not building cloud infrastructures. Their core competence is deploying services and, uh, and, and delivering customer experiences. And you don't have to be the uh, builder and owner of that cloud infrastructure in order to do that. So uh, you know, I, I, I predict that there will be players that uh, telcos can outsource their cloud infrastructure to. I hesitate to call it public cloud because it isn't public cloud as we know it today. Um, but I think telcos could get ahead a hell of a lot more quickly with their NFV mission if they weren't you know, mired in this, uh, you know, in this business of building their own private cloud infrastructures. Interesting, as usual. Martin Taylor, thank you. Pleasure.